Okay, whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Matt Aubrey, and I'm Matthew Winter. We're going to share a little bit about the uh, Charlie Garth case. So this is a pretty recent case. It went from July 26, yeah, July, excuse me, September 2016 through July of this past year. Um, and so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. Um, actually, I'm curious, how many of you have heard of the Charlie Garth case? Two. All right, so. <laughs> Hopefully we can enlighten you guys a little bit. So Charlie Gard was born on August 4th, 2016 in London to Christopher Gard and Connie Yates. Uh, the doctor said that he was a perfectly healthy baby at a healthy full-term weight. As you can see, this is a picture of him when he was just born. Uh, he looks like a normal, healthy infant. But within the next few weeks, Charlie's parents began to notice that he was getting weaker. He became unable to lift his head and support himself like the typical infant should be able to, and his, his breathing began to slow and he became very lethargic. His parents decided to take him to the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, which is a designated children's hospital. He was placed on a ventilator there because he was no longer able to breathe on his own. Doctors diagnosed him with a genetic disorder called infantile onset encephalomyopathic mitochondrial DNA depletion syndrome. And I'm going to refer to it as MDBS for obvious reasons. So what is MDBS? So this is going to go into a little bit of biology. So if you can tap into your high school biology class, um, that'd be great. MDBS is a recessive trait that comes from a mutation on the eighth chromosome. This means that the normal gene sequence that you and I have has been altered in Charlie. The gene sequence that was altered codes for a specific protein within the mitochondria, which many of you know is the powerhouse of the cell. What you may not know is that the mitochondria have their own DNA. This protein synthesizes nucleotides, which are the building blocks of this DNA. And in order to replicate the mitochondrial DNA, you need these nucleotides. Since the gene in Charlie has been altered, this protein is no longer present in his body. This means that the, that the nucleotides are not being synthesized and that the mitochondrial DNA is not being replicated. Since the mitochondrial DNA is not being replicated, the mitochondria are not able to function how they should be. Going back to the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell, if the mitochondria aren't functioning properly, the energy um, that we need to live is not being made. Without that energy, the cells do not perform their necessary functions of life, and they die. In Charlie's case, well, Charlie's case was called encephalomyopathic. The, in medical terminology, the prefix encephalo means relating to the brain, and myo means relating to the muscles. So Charlie's specific syndrome affected only his brain and his muscles. So those were the parts of his body that were dying. The doctor said that his prognosis was bleak, that he did not have long to that he did not have long to live. So Charlie had a serious disease, and this made for a complicated case. So the issue that arose with the Charlie Gard case was that there was experimental treatment being offered in America. And according to Francesca Gallet, um, the treatment was called nucleotide, nucleoside bypass therapy. And nucleosides are a compound that the body can turn into nucleotides and DNA is made up of building blocks known as nucleotides. And there are four nucleotides that make up the DNA, and adenine bonds with thymine, while guanine bonds with cytosine, and they are tightly held together through hydrogen bond. So the medication being proposed in this trial can be taken orally and supplemented into the baby's food. Uh, it is then absorbed through the digestive system, and it is not degraded. So the medication can then make its way to trillions of the mitochondria due to its specific chemical makeup. And it is used as a supplement to make up for the lack of nucleotides in the mitochondrial DNA. So this picture here kind of shows on a biochemical level. It just shows that if you take it in orally, it then makes its way in the intestines where it goes into the bloodstream, finds a specific cell, and finds the mitochondria. So the experimentation has only been done on 18 different patients with mitochondrial depletion syndrome. And in one case, a child has gone from being able to 
I'm able to move his fingers and toes to being able to stand and communicate, although he was still placed on a ventilator. And However, guard syndrome is so rare, researchers have only encountered 15 other infants with this specific type of MDDS. So while evidence support that it may be a treatment for one type of MDS, it, is not, it may not be a treatment for Charlie's specific type. So after hearing about the treatment, Charlie's parents requested that Charlie be transferred to America for this non-invasive procedure. And the family raised over 1.2 million British pound, which is equal to 1.6 million US dollars. So and the money was also raised without public funding. So kind of in a nutshell, in January of 2017, there was the option for the trial of treatment that had some chance of success, and there was a world-leading doctor who was available and willing and able to perform it, and the funds had been sufficiently raised. However, the means to control and minimize Charlie's suffering now had to be taken into consideration, but keeping that in mind, Charlie's only alternative was death. So doctors opposed this trial because of the low chance of success, uh, along with the fears that extra time and life support would be too painful for him. So Great Ormond Hospital denied the request. And they denied it because the doctors really felt he had no chance to recover or even survive. And they felt taking him off life support and allowing for a peaceful death was the best option at this time. So because this was a well-known case, there was a lot of public outcry. With it. And the request was taken to three different courts and they all ruled in favor of Great Ormond Hospital. And the legal process lasted for four months and left the family now with no treatment and no chance for Charlie. Yet Charlie had to go through all the suffering of being kept on life support. So Charlie was then taken off life support and died on July 28th of 2017. Over the court hearings, Trump, the Pope, and thousands of others weighed in. Donald Trump's tweet was, if we can help little Charlie Gard, as per our friends in the UK and the Pope, we would be delighted to do so. So there were a lot of opinions thrown out there in this emotion. And this kind of raised the ethical dilemmas of the case, and it raised several good questions, including how and who should decide on what makes life, life worth living, and what kind of chances are worth taking, parents, doctors, scientific experts, courts, or a combination of them all. And how much of the decision making should be left to the parents, because parents obviously want what's best for their children, but sometimes the power can be abused or even mistaken. Because if Charlie's parents had requested ongoing intensive care for a treatment with zero scientific rationale or evidence, that would be abuse. But they weren't. They were asking for a treatment with a clear scientific rationale and some relevant evidence, with the support of a qualified medical expert. So the case required the doctors to think ethically while using all the scientific evidence present. So this case was very complicated and emotional. And it would have been reasonable for Charlie's parents to withdraw the treatment or choose a small chance for improvement as they did. So this then brought in the issue of autonomy because Charlie was not only an infant, but he was unconscious. So he was clearly not capable of making decisions for himself. So again, who has the right to dictate Charlie's treatment? And then if you went to a utilitarian standpoint, which we talked about in class, uh, I think that the treatment would have been given because if it would have worked, it could have eventually saved the lives and improved the quality of life for any other child who could have been born with this disease. And then that also brought in beneficence and non-maleficence. And non-maleficence was a really big question in this case because the doctors weren't really sure if Charlie could even feel pain. Um, so there were a lot of questions throughout the process that, that need to be answered. So when this happens again, we kind of will be better prepared as a society and know how to better handle the situation. So initially, like I'm sure many of you, we felt that the parents should have had the final say in Charlie's situation. After all, they're the parents and Charlie's their child. And the experimentation may lead to Charlie actually getting better. But the further that we got into our research and the more that we began to understand the issue, our views kind of shifted. So if the trial worked and Charlie did actually survive, would Charlie ever actually live? Charlie had suffered brain damage, and as for now, damage to the central ner nervous system and the brain is irreversible. If the trial kept Charlie alive, what would his quality of life even be like? Art and Olga Estopanen have a child with MDDS. However, his is only a myopathic type. Uh, remember, myopathic 
means relating to the muscles. So his, his doesn't affect his brain. Their child, or junior, underwent this nucleoside bypass therapy. They stated on ABC News Nightline that Art Jr. can now find and play movies on an iPad and say mommy and daddy and a few other words. This family reached out to Guard's parents. And this, this is great and all, and it shows that the treatment can help, but Art Jr.'s brain was completely healthy and untouched by his syndrome. Art Jr. is still in a motorized chair and requires 24-7 care and, and several treatments a day. He is also unable to move his arms on his own. Charlie's case was much more severe than ours. Um, and if the treatment kept Charlie alive, his, parent, his family would never see the same results that, that Stopanen saw with Art Jr. Charlie would likely never be able to talk, uh, he would never be able to open his eyes, and he may never even leave the vegetative state that he was in while he was hooked up to the ventilator. So in class we talked, we talked a little bit about the state of mind of patients and whether or not they're qualified to make their own decisions at times due to the pain and stress that they, that they have um, in the hospital during their medical crisis. But I believe that this rule also applies to the family members as well when the decision is left to them regarding a loved one's life. Charlie's condition hindered the parent's ability to rationally consider the possible and logical options for Charlie's treatment. In the end, we believe that the decision made by the courts to prevent the experimental treatment was correct after all. Although it is very unfortunate that the timeline of the trial was so extensive and lasted as long as it did. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I don't know if you said it, but do you know how many types of MPPS exist? Um, I there's like about five, I believe, but they all they all kind of come. Charlie's case came from a mutation on his age chromosome, they all come on different uh, chromosomes. If you were the doctor put on this case, what would you guys do? Would you go, would you make the parents go through with the treatment, or would you have that? Um, I, like, like you said, kind of at first we thought like it's the parents' rights, like let them go ahead and decide what they want. If they want the improvement, let them try. But I mean, the more we researched it, I think it, it was pretty clear that he really wasn't going to survive because the, the medication that had been proposed was working only with the myopathic, which was just meant the muscles, and his it affected the brain. So I think he was too far gone, and it wouldn't really have made a difference. So I think in the end, the courts really did make the right decision. Other questions? Okay, thank you.